Yes. Okay, so how is everyone doing? How is everybody doing? It's a Thursday. It's a cold Thursday, right? So just to get everybody warmed up for today's session, just to get everybody warmed up for today's session, can I get, you know, where you are calling from? Can I get where you are calling from, right? Just your name, right, in the chat and where you are coming, calling from. Your name and where you are calling from. Just a couple of people. Um, I've been expecting people to answer in the chat here on my screen. Your name and where you are, you know, joining the call from. Okay, so somebody has just, Lydia has just helped us out by saying that if you are, if you just joined and you can't see anything, you know, click on the headset icon. Okay, it's, it's, it's you know, redundant saying that because you won't be able to hear me give out these instructions. Okay, so Adikuni is calling from Port Harcourt. Adikuni is the only one that has responded. He's calling from Port Harcourt, okay? Um, Uluwatobi is joining from Ogun State, okay? So there are a lot of us trooping in here. So please, as you are joining, as you are joining, just go ahead and let me know. Let me know where yeah, you are joining. Where you are joining from, okay? Please, 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 please. Let me know where you are joining from. Right, let's take a breather before we get started for um, masterclass for today. Okay. Right, so Daniel, okay, Daniel is from, calling from Jaws, Blessing from Lagos, um, Ronald from AKT. Okay, so um, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Right, let's get started with you know, the masterclass today. But before we get started, I want to appreciate, you know, the variety of locations that we just um, sent in the chat. People calling in from different parts of the country and the world, right? People calling in from different parts of the country and the world, right? So this is one thing I want you to understand. Right when you come into um analytics into the analytics environment, it's an it's an environment that enables networking. Right outside what you normally experience, it's an environment that will enable networking outside what you would normally experience. Right, so that's one thing I want to just start off start with. Right, you are coming into analytics. Right, you are coming into this environment where you are going to be connected with individuals with diverse opinions and you know diverse backgrounds. Right. So one thing we need to do before we kick things off is this. Um, I want you to indicate on the chat, if this is your first time joining the call, if this is your first time joining the call, I want you to indicate the one, otherwise, you know, give me a hundred, a zero or 20. But if this is your first time joining the call, if it's your first time joining the call, give me a, give me a one, give me a one. Okay, so Ada, Ada, this is your first time joining the call, right? Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of ones coming in here. So meaning that whatever we're discussing today, Right outside of about us and you know what we offer, the core concept of what we are discussing today as on your screen, I would have to you know break it down. I would have to break it down to a level that is extremely understandable by everybody on call. That is one thing I'm beginning to understand now. That most of us that are joining in, most of us that are joining in, right, we are you know coming in for the first time. Most of us might not even have experience. With creating our predictive model, I think that's why we're here. That is why we are here, actually, right? To build and deploy our first, you know, predictive model using Excel. So basically, um, I understand that the one, the, the ones that are coming in. Okay, so um, since yes, people on call, let's get started with um the master class, right? So about the analytics, about the analytics, about the analytics. Okay, so um, the analytics is an ed tech, you know, company that helps African and people of Black community learn premium tech skills and you know the overall goal here is to lower the entry barrier into tech okay that is about us right the service we offer basically involve in enabling the understanding across different tech fields right or uh, you can come into the analytics you know wanting to understand more about data analytics what it comprises right and how to you know, capture opportunities within that business analysis you know data engineering you know data science um Financial analytics, HR analytics, Scrum, you know, cybersecurity and AI engineering. Okay, these are some of you know um, the service we provide. We want to build capacity and understanding across these various fields. Okay, um, let me give me a second. Let me check my audio settings to ensure that my volume is high. Okay, yes, my volume should be high now. Right, my volume should be high now. Okay, you could hear me before, but you hear me way clearer now. You hear me way clearer now. Okay, so um, yes, so. This is about analytics, and you know we are facilitators. I am one of the facilitators in analytics, right? You know, and I am coming from this industry, right? I'm coming from the industry. I've worked in you know a lot of sectors. 
And you are going to see that when we get to about me for a while. Or our facilitators at analytics are, you know, top professionals from diverse sectors and, you know, reputable organizations. And the courses that we offer, the courses that we offer here at analytics, you know, they are optimized in a way that you get maximum value and you know it is it is essentially and you know it is a, it is practical right it's a you know a, a practical approach towards learning right so that's about analytics and edtech you know helping africans and people of the black community you know um springboard into the tech uh, ecosystem now um moving on to the founders moving on to the founders you know, analytics you know the, the the core founders of analytics right we have adiza suleiman we have Adiza Suleiman, right? Adiza Suleiman was a data analyst. He's, he's a data analytic expert, right? Um, he has worked in, in the capacity of a consultant in, in data science, right? And also an analyst too, especially for Sahara Group Limited, right? Also, Adiza has also, you know, consulted on several um, spaces, right? Uh, acting in the capacity of a data analytics consultant, right? We are looking at someone with you know close to uh, more than a decade experience in data analytics and you know management consulting. Right, is working in sports, professional services, health tech, energy, and the automobile sector. That is Adeza Suleiman. Right. Efemina Ipro, on the other hand, is also you know a co-founder of Analytics, and you know he started out you know as a contractor you know uh, in the UK, also moving to uh, into the US to also offer services. Right, and you know he basically you know has also acted as you know in in the business data support end of things as being a global business system analyst. Right, as also you know um um, um develop business intelligence solutions. Right, he has experience too in data analytics, data science, data engineering, um and the power platform. Right, so when you hear Power BI, that platform, if you mean Ipro embodies you know the knowledge required to you know seamlessly use the power platforms to solve tools, right? Close to a decade years of experience to cutting across multiple sectors, right? So that's if you mean I pro and that is um Adiza, but that is not all the individual the brilliant minds at analytics. That is not all the brilliant minds at analytics, right? There is also me. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Ibrahim. Yes, my name is Ibrahim Ibrahim. You heard correct. Uh, I'm a senior data associate at analytics. And I have, you know, more than five years of industry experience in data science. Now, um, this, you know, span of years have, you know, led me to work in various fields, right? I've worked in FMCGs. I've worked in music. I've applied data science concepts, right, to music, right? I've, went, I've been in the music industry, you know, analyzing data, analyzing music content itself, right? And, you know, creating solutions, right? Recommendation engines and everything that, you know, data science powers, every solution data science powers in the music industry, I've had a hand in. Consulting, I've also uh, offered consulting services, and basically, and lastly, I've also been in advanced research, working with high-end data science concepts, right? Developing, you know, on on, on seen technologies. I've also been, you know, in that space. Now, the extent of my work in this industry is usually span, you know, either data analysis or practical machine learning, encompassing deep learning and all. So I am a, you know, well-rounded data scientist. Um, the second individual you are seeing on the screen here is our CEO, um, Chukwemeka. Uh, Chukwemeka, you know, has worked in the capacity of a data analyst also, right? He has also worked, you know, in regional control and data protection, right? Financial modeling and valuation analyst, and basically um, governance, risk, um, control, and control. He is that professional with, you know, close to a decade of experience, right? In various sectors as well. Okay, so this is about the team. And I think we can move forward from that to discuss what we are here for today. Okay, so if you are just joining here, we we're just introducing the analytics and introducing the team, the founders. So um, yes, you might have missed a couple of you know uh, important points, but don't worry, um, it's not the end of the world. You are surely going to meet these people in future sessions, right? So today, what are we going to be discussing today? What are we going to be doing today? Before I go ahead and you know outline what we are going to do today, can I just go ahead and you know receive you know is this your first time? I asked this question before. I'm asking it again. If this is your first time joining the call ever, if this is your first masterclass ever, if this is your first analytics experience, right, within the point, within the um, scope of, you know, a masterclass or a back and forth like this, can I get a one? Can I get a one in the chat? If this is your first time joining the masterclass, can I get a one in the chat, right? Please. I want everybody to, to, to engage the chat. If this is your first time joining a one, if this is not your first time joining a zero, yeah, a zero will be appropriate. If this is not your first time joining a zero will be appropriate, but if this is your first time you want. So basically, I should be expecting over 30 responses, right? I should be expecting over 30 responses, right? If either you are joining for the first time 
but you are not joining for the first time. Okay, so uh, I'm seeing uh, Apia. Okay, I'm seeing um, Glory. I'm seeing um, Yahaya. I'm seeing Taiwo. Right, I'm seeing a um, Michi. Okay, so Daniel has been in a couple of sessions. Okay, so welcome Daniel to another. Right, so over the course of this session, you will see me looking like this. You will see me looking like this. If you look at my uh, my my uh, face right now, you will see me looking like this. Do not think I'm distracted. I'm working on two computers. Right, I'm working on two computers. So basically, um, I'll be you know presenting here for a while, and I'll also be presenting here for a while too. But my camera will be on on this device. Okay, so that is um just. To, Keep your ease, not make you think that I'm, you know, distracted by something else. No, I'm, you know, fully locked in. And I offer the same advice to you. Ensure you're also fully locked in, okay? So um, if you just join the call, you didn't hear when I say, just indicate where you're joining from to, your name and where you're joining from, your name and where you're joining from. I see a lot of you have, you know, Zoom user. Um, I, I can't tell the name. So you just go ahead and indicate your name and where you're joining from. Also, right, let us, you know, um, showcase the location we are currently in, right? As a means to introduce ourselves, okay? So please, I would, I would want everybody to also engage in the chat regarding that. Just tell me where, what your name is and where you are joining from, okay? So, um, right, let's get started with the outline for today's program, okay? So Flora, Flora is joining from Port Harcourt, Glory is joining from Abuja, right? So this is, a, this is a wide range of individuals, you know, across, you know, not just the uh, um, country, but the globe. A lot of people joining from outside the country also indicated earlier, right? So um, that's it from everyone, okay? So let's get started, let's get started. Right, so today we are going to be, you know, having our practical session. We are going to have our practical session. That's the first thing we are going to be having, the practical session. So Collins is, you know, from, joining from Kenya, Taiwo from Lagos. Okay, so this is the beauty about analytics. You see people joining from different regions across the globe, right? This is one of the, if, 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 if you're not, if you feel like you're not going to gain anything, one thing you are bound to gain at analytics is networking, right? You get to network people with us, professionals with people, opportunities providers in the tech space you want to join and finally with your fellow colleagues that are also growing like you that also have access to you know opportunities and you know areas of growth you know otherwise that would have closed off so that is another importance right that's another benefit you are bound to you know or um, gain when you join the, Tenal the Tenalytics ecosystem Okay, so yeah, thank you for indicating where you're joining from. Akina, I see you. Mitch, I see you also. Right, let's get let's apply what we are discussing today. Let us outline what we are discussing today. Okay, so for today we are going to start up um discussing um our practical um model development in Excel. We are going to start our practical. We are going to develop a model in Excel, a simple linear regression model in Excel for predictions. Right, and remember. The concept of today is was predicting of making predictions in Excel. Right, creating your first predictive model in Excel. So we're going to start with that, right? And then after that, by that point in time, you should be interested enough in understanding what it means to be a data scientist, because what we are doing is one of the core responsibilities of a data scientist, right? And the next we're going to do is also outline the pathway to becoming a data scientist, right? To become a data scientist. We're going to show you the road, right? The third is now we're going to show you people that have walked this journey, people that have walked this road, that have actually had successes, right? Uh, on, on working the path to becoming a data scientist and securing a job. And we're also going to discuss, you know, the analytics growth internship program and the special offer we have for those of you on call. So if you are on call right about now, there's a special offer waiting for you at the very end of our conversation. I, you know, advise you wait to the end, right? So let's get started with our practical session. Let us get started with our practical session, right? Let us get started with our practical session. Okay, so, what are our learning objectives for the day? What are our learning objectives for the day? We are going to start get started with Excel. We're going to look at the software, right? The software itself, Excel, right? We're going to look at Excel, the spreadsheet software. Then we are going to discuss some concepts, right? Associated with what we are here for today. Predictive analytics, what it is, right? What are models, right? How do we evaluate models, right? And basically what is linear regression in Excel? We're going to discuss this core concept, right? That are pivotal to our sources in class today. After that, we are going to move on to the practical session. So this is what we are going to do in the first app or in the, in the first portion of you know, today's call. Um, we are starting with you know, get, um, looking at Excel, you know, discussing concepts, and finally, and then moving on to the practical end of things, so where we create our first predictive model in Excel. Okay, so first look at Excel. The first look at Excel. What is Excel, right? What is Excel? Now, most of you have heard of Excel already. Before now, most of you must have, might, might have heard of Excel. So if you have heard of the, the, the spreadsheet to call Excel, just give me one in the chat. If you have heard of the tool called Excel, give me one in the chat. If you have access to a tool like Excel, give me one also in the chat, right? If you have access to a tool like Excel, if you have, if you have heard of it, just give me one in the chat. 
If you have a title of Excel, give me a zero. If it's your first time here in the tool, Microsoft Excel, right? Right, and give me a zero. Okay, so uh, most of what most of us sending in our response seems to have heard of in your Excel. Of course, we are proactive. We know about this tool from our former place of work or just having heard of it, right? So um, Excel is a powerful spreadsheet application, you know, used for organizing, analyzing, and presenting data, right? Um, what makes Excel stand out is, the, is some of the key features, like, you know, the ability to organize data in sales via the grid structure, right? Excel empowers users, you know, the ability to create graphs and charts, right? And, you know, Excel gives us, you know, the data analysis tools. So basically, one of those tools we are going to be using today, right, is as a, is, is as a result of these key features, the data analysis um, toolkit. And finally, data validation, right? As a company, you don't want to be collecting any, any kind of data, and Excel empowers you to have a bit of control over the type of data you work with and, you know, you collect. So that is, these are some of the key features of Excel. There are many more, but these are the forefront ones that will be important for the session today, right? So let's move on to predictive analytics. Now, I've discussed Excel. We've said that we are going to be creating predictive models using Excel. So we know what Excel is now. It's time for us to know what, you know, what, 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 are these, what, what am I saying when I say predictive analytics or predictive models, right? What am I saying when I say we are creating a predictive model, right? This is what I'm talking about here. Predictive analytics involves you know, using historical data and statistical algorithms to predict future outcomes of behavior, right? That's what predictive analytics is. So let's go ahead and have an exercise. I see, you know, Salma, Yahaya, um, um, Richard, Ayorinde, Ada, there are people that have been responding to me. So um, I want your response now. Let's, let's have an exercise on what predictive analytics is in the real world, in the real world, right? I will use a real world example now for everybody to understand predictive analytics. Okay, so we're in the winning season, right? So let me, let, me, let me give you data. I'll give you the weather conditions for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's today, the weather conditions. And you, I want you now to tell me what you think the estimated weather condition will be for Friday. So I want everybody here to be a weather forecaster. I want everybody on call now to be a weather forecaster, right? Um, I want you, I want to, I want to take, I want you to understand that predict, predictive analytics is inbuilt in, in each and every one of us. So I want us to forecast the weather for Friday. So Monday it was very, very cloudy. Monday it was very, very cloudy, right? Monday it was very, very cloudy, thick clouds. That's the weather for Monday. Tuesday, there was a light shower on Tuesday, a light shower of rain on Tuesday, right? Wednesday, the shower became very, very heavy. Wednesday, the shower, the, the rain became very, very heavy. So Monday, thick clouds. Tuesday, light rain. Wednesday, heavy rain, right? Heavy rain fell on Wednesday, right? Thursday, it was back to light rain. It was back to light rain falling on Thursday. So who can tell me what you... Okay, I seem to be too fast. Okay. So who can tell me what the weather will look like on a Friday? So let, I'm just giving an example here, right? So I'm saying like this now, Monday, it was cloudy. Monday, it was cloudy, right? Monday, it was cloudy. Um, Tuesday, it was what? Tuesday, it was, um, it, it, it's rained lightly on Tuesday. Just a slight drizzle happened on Tuesday, right? Wednesday, Wednesday, you know, it was a heavier downpour on Wednesday. Um, Thursday, back to light, you know, drizzle. Those, those lights, you know, rain that fell on Thursday. Now I'm asking, what do you think the weather condition would be on Friday? So isn't it, I think I'm, I think I took it a bit slower this time around now. So isn't it, what do you think the weather condition would be on Friday? I want you to just go ahead and, you know, engage the chat. What do you think the weather condition would be on Friday, right? So I'm seeing a lot of people saying sunny. I'm seeing a lot of people say sunny, that the weather condition will be sunny on Friday. Somebody saying thunderstorm also. Somebody saying Friday might be cloudy, okay? So yes. Um, now let let's, let me let me come let me come up with my own predictions, right? So it was very very cloudy. Now on Tuesday it, it started falling a bit. Wednesday it became heavier. Thursday it was light, and then Friday no. Now for my own estimates, I'm like okay maybe uh, all the clouds are gone, right? Or maybe you know on Friday it will be a bit cloudy. You know gearing towards a much much sunnier weekend. That is my own prediction. Friday it will be a bit cloudy, and then you know by Saturday the cloud will clear up and it will be sunny on Saturday. Now what now what I'm doing is this. I'm following the pattern established from Monday to Wednesday to Thursday. I am following the pattern established from Monday to Wednesday. Now, everyone here did the exact same thing. Every, no, one here, no one here just you know, looked at Thursday alone and made predictions on Friday. Everyone here probably had and understood. Everyone had and understood from Monday to Thursday. And then inherently, using some, some kind of uh, association with previous you know, data, you're able to make predictions on Friday. You're able to say, okay, I'm seeing the, this is the trend I see. This is the trend I see, right? So probably um, Taiwo was like, okay, it seems like 
the, everything will be, you know, you know, coming to a stop, right? So I should go ahead and forecast sunny or cloudy, right? On, 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 on. Flora is saying, okay, I'm seeing a circular pattern here. It was uh, um, small rain, large rain, small rain again. So I'm thinking maybe it will repeat itself again. This three will repeat itself and it will be large, a large rain that, that, that falls, right? Um, um, come, um, Anisha and um, Akina, they are both saying, okay, we've, we we are kind of on looking at the trend. We are seeing that um, the weather conditions should be going from very cloudy, the clouds are not falling down as rain, and I saw there should be no clouds on Friday, it should be sunny, right? So we are all, you know, making a educated guesses based on what we know from the data that we just received. And that is what predictive analytics is. That is what predictive analytics is. That is what predictive analytics is. Richie Blessing, Samaya Haya, um, is in a time, um, is in a um, Anisha Akina, all these things you have done, right? By, by you know, thinking about and typing in the chat, that's what predictive analytics is you know, in the core center, right? Using historical data and some form of algorithm to predict future outcomes of behavior, to predict future outcome of behavior. That is what predictive analytics is. Prediction, prediction, analysis, prediction, analysis, hence predictive anal analytics, right? Now, we are humans. We came up, we came about this prediction with our rationale, with our rationale, Right, but for a computer, a computer would use you know a model to come to its own prediction. A computer would use a model to come to its own prediction. So look at what we did in our own in our own weather forecast situation. Look at what we did. I gave you guys data. You collected data from me. I gave you data. I told you the weather conditions from Monday to Thursday. I gave you the data. You you basically collected data from me. Right, that's one. You didn't do EDA, but you kind of understood what I'm talking about in the data, right? You, you, you kind of analyzed it partially. Exploratory data analysis, right, is the next step in, um, in um, predictive analytics. You understood the data I was trying to provide to you, and then you went on to make your own predictions, right? Right Now, whether you are correct or not, we can only find out tomorrow. Whether you are correct or not, maybe tomorrow I'll reach out to everyone here, and I'll let you guys know what the weather was tomorrow, right? So whether you are correct or not, you can only find out when tomorrow comes, right? So that these are the key components of predictive analytics. These are the key components. Data collection, exploratory data analysis, predictive modeling, and model evaluation, right? You create a model after you have collected data, right? That model, you are going to use the model to make predictions. And if the predictions are correct, you know you have a good model. If the predictions are wrong, you know you have a bad model. These are the key components of predictive analytics. And what are the use cases? Weather, weather forecasting is a very good place to start from in one of the use cases of from predictive analytics. But, but in a much, much large, larger picture or big picture or, 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 or view, healthcare is a place where you know predictive analytics work. During the pandemic, if you guys recall the pandemic, many people use many data scientists were called on board to kind of track the rate at which people would catch you know the um, um virus, right? Also, not just you know the pandemic, the pandemics that happen all the time, right? You know, we know a couple of them, Ebola, um, or, um Lassa or, or, or fever, all these uh, all these all these pandemics or disease outbreaks, data scientists can sometimes track how many people will catch it the next day by looking at how many people caught it from the days before. A data scientist can do that using predictive analytics. In finance also, in finance also, fraud detection, forecasting the price of stocks. You see people in Wall Street, right? You see individuals in Wall Street. If you have watched movies like Wolf of Wall Street, right, um, or um, in Big Shots, right? People in Wall Street trying to look at what the future stock price would look like. Predictive analytics goes a long way in helping people answer that question. And also in marketing, in marketing, in marketing, right? In marketing, whether a customer would like, whether a potential customer would, you know, key into a product, right? Predictive analytics is also used in, in, in so that's one of the use cases of what? Predictive analytics. Okay, so that, right about now, we are going to move on to the practical workflow, right? I will take a look at, I will show you guys the data. I will show everyone here the data, right? I will set up a visualization. I'll tell you how to visualize with Excel. Then I will set up a linear regression model. And then I'm going to apply that model to a sample set. I will apply that model to a sample set. And then we can now go ahead and check whether the model is correct or not. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and share my screen if I can. Okay, I can't share my screen from this end.
aqui. Me second. Right. So let me just go ahead now and you know share my second screen. My second screen, my second computer. Or I think um I can't do that. Um so please give me a moment here. Um Jedidiah, Jedidiah, can you make my second device a full post so I can share my second screen? Uh, so I'm just typing you know a hi in the chat now. So this is my account right about now. I wanted to make this account a full post. Okay, Jedidiah, you can hear me right. Um Jedidiah, can you hear me? Okay, thank you very yes, much. Yes, I can. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so now my second account has been made a post. I'm going to go ahead now and share my screen on that end. Okay, so let me go ahead and share. Right, so I'll change the entire screen. In here. Right, and I'll basically be moving to Excel. I'll be moving to Excel. Okay, so give me a moment. Okay, right. Right. Okay. So here we are at Excel, right? We are here at Excel. So welcome to um, um Microsoft Excel for this particular um masterclass. Right. So what are we doing today? What are we doing today? So so far we've looked at what predictive analytics is. We have you know looked at Excel. We have discussed Excel, right? We understood models, right? So linear models, linear models, right? Linear models. These are models that are, that behave like you know simple formulas very simple models very very simple models they're not too complicated to understand right okay so right about now this is what we are going to do to create our first linear model we are going to look at the data the train and the test sample we are going to look at the data the train data and the test data i will explain what the train data and the test data is all about okay so um the train data for example we all on this call now i told everybody this i told everybody what and what the weather condition was from Monday to what to um Thursday. I told everybody what the weather condition was from Monday to Thursday. That is train data. That is your train data. That is your train data. What the weather condition is from Monday to Thursday. That is your train data. Your test data is what the weather condition would be on Friday, right? The, the, the Friday weather forecast, right? You may not have it immediately. It may come, it may come with time, but you surely have it. Why is it called the test data? It is called the test data because everyone here made predictions, but we don't know whether everyone is correct. To know whether everybody is correct, we need to test everyone, basically. So when I say, what is the weather prediction for Friday? That is me testing everybody on call. I tell everybody, I ask everybody for that weather um, prediction on Friday. Now, we all have our own rationale for how we got our answers, but which, which of us is correct? Which, which, which rationale is the best way to go forward, right? It, when we get the Friday results, we can now compare, okay, um, isn't it said, um, um, isn't it said, um, sunny and it is sunny on Friday, right? Richie Blessing said sunny and it's sunny on Friday. So these are people that have, you know, the appropriate rationale, right? Meanwhile, people that said, you know, heavy rain, thunderstorm might be a bit off. I might need to go back and retrain or, you know, um, reevaluate how they, you know, forecast the weather, right? So we are going to set up our linear regression model and then we are going to apply it to our test sample. Now, in this case, now what we have done is this we have kept. A bit of test data we have you know we know we are going to be you know addressing a problem under predictions right we, we are not using all our data to train our linear regression model we are only going to be using you know 80 percent of our data to train right 80 percent of our data to train and then the remaining 20 percent we are going to keep aside when we are done training we are going to evaluate that model with the remaining 20 percent to see whether the model is even doing a good job or not that is what applied to test sample is and finally, we are going to evaluate the model. Is, is this model correct or is this model wrong? So this is our workflow. Take a look at the data, train and test, set up visualization, create our linear regression model, apply to test sample and what evaluates the model. Okay, right. So what is, what, what is the case study for today? What is the case study for today? This is the case study for today, right? So for today's um, 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 um case study, we are not working with weather conditions, right? We are not working with weather conditions, but rather we are going to be working with we are going to be working with uh, a popular online market that have been collecting information about customers, right? 
they have been collecting information about customers, right? So think of a popular online market, right? I want everybody in the chat, right, to guide and tell me a popular online market that they, they know of. I want everybody in the chat to guide and tell me about a popular online market they know of. Please, I want you people to tell me a popular online market that you know of. Go ahead and just, you know, in the chat, Amazon. Thank you, Richard. Benedicta said Amazon. Everybody's in Amazon. Yeah, a lot more than Amazon, but I will take it. Yeah, Jumia, exactly. Etsy, okay? This is wonderful response, right? So let's use um, Shane, Gigi. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, right? So um, let me break it down for you, right? So Conga, like Glory, um, Glory says right now, Conga has been tracking their customers, right? They have been collecting the age of the customer, information about the age of the customer. So let's say, Ibrahim Ibrahim, right? Your facilitated for the day. I went on Conga to buy something, right? Now, Conga recorded my age. They recorded my gender. They recorded my annual income. Maybe when I was registering, I provided that information to them. And they recorded my spending score. They calculated my spending score. So Conga has four information about me. My age, my gender, annual income, and my spending score. Now, I went on Conga and I made purchase of over 10,000 or 15,000. I made purchase amounting to 15,000. Now, Conga has the fifth information about me, how much Ibrahim Ibrahim spends. These are the five information they have about me right about now. They have my age, my gender, my annual income, my spending score, and how much I spent the, the, the last time I went you know, into their website. Right. Now, Conga wants to create a model that will take this first for information. Conga wants to create a model that will take this first for information and predict this fifth information such that when um Taiwo or when um Taiwo is made in China, <laughs> such that when Taiwo or when Glory or when Salma or when Ada John or Benedicta, when they go into the platform, they already have the full information about them. And what they will try and do next is okay, what is the potential amount these people can purchase? What is that? What is the potential amount um, we should expect these people to spend on our store? Why do we need why do we need to be able to predict that? So let's say I run, let's say me now I run you know an online store. I, I have a model that works. The, when um when Taiwo comes into my shop, my model can predict just how much or an estimate of how much Taiwo can spend, you know, maximum. What I would want to do as the owner of Conga is maximize Taiwo spending in my store. So I know that Taiwo okay, okay, my model says that oh, my model, you know, records uh, um takes Taiwo's age. Um, uh, I think it's um, yeah, Taiwo's age um, or Glory's age, Glory's gender, Glory's annual income, and Glory's spending score. And my model says um, Glory is able to spend um, 25000 That is what we estimate Glory has the capacity to spend in this shopping spree that she's on. What I want to do is ensure that Glory does not spend less than that. I will maximize my, um, um, uh, my advertisements. I will make sure that I don't give her products greater than 25000 or rather within that range, I would, I would, I would um structure Glory's experience in my Amazon website with that value, so that that value is important because I would structure it in a way that Glory will not you know meet um products that are of higher values than that. I would structure my experience in a way that she comes to the platform. You know, we are always recommending things that we know that is within that particular buying range, right? That is what, why this information is relevant. That is why we want to predict. How much people can spend in our store today, right? So that we can understand, we can, you know, have that information when we are marketing goods to them. You don't want to market to somebody that you know has the capacity to spend thirty thousand. You don't want to market goods worth sixty thousand to them, right? You don't want to do that because that might that they, they won't purchase that because the model the model is correct. The model is saying that that is not what this person we are expecting this person to you know be in the capacity to spend, right? So what data do we have to go forward? We have the customer ID. We recorded everyone's customer ID when they came to our store. We have their age. We have their income, right? When they were registering, they provided their income. And we have their spending score. Spending score. Now, if you're not familiar with spending score, but if you're familiar with credit score, it's like the same thing. Spending score is from zero to a hundred. And, you know, it's, it's a number that measures how, how much this person is willing to spend anytime they come into our shop, into our store, pardon me. How much are they willing to spend anytime they come into our store? Zero, they are not willing to spend at all. A hundred, oh, this person is, is, is willing to pour down out is willing to always buy right if he has the capacity to buy right so that's the last so that's the second to the last information that we have on each customer in our database the last is the family size so we, we realize that family size is also another um relevant information about everybody that buys family size is also another relevant information right and that makes sense in, in the real world a family man of two people 
I would not buy as much as a family man of four persons of, of four, right? If I was, you know, if, if I was coming, if I was buying on behalf of a family of two, what I would buy would be different from what if somebody coming on behalf of a family of eight would buy, right? To be different, to be different. So we are so um this online store realized that okay, family size is of importance too, and they managed to collect that information about everyone that came to visit the store. Right. So they collected all this information, they collected the age. The income, the spending score, the family size. And the last thing they recorded was the amount spent. Was the amount spent. How much was spent? How much was spent, right? By each of these persons' information, each of these persons that, that visited the store. How much was spent? Okay, so this is the resulting data they had, right? The resulting data they had. Okay, so there is it. Here is the resulting data they had. Let me see if I can bring this up here. Okay. Right. So this is the resulting data they had. This is the resulting data they had. Okay. So they had, you know, the customer ID, right, which is just random numbers. Customer ID is a random number. It's a random number. It has no relevance, right? The next information on our data is the gender. Is the person a male or a female? The, the next is the age, right? The age of the individual, right? Then the income, how much this person earns, how much this person earns, right? Then the spending score, how much is the person willing to spend, right? And find and you know, la the last two is what the family size and the amount spent. The amount spent. These are all the information collected, the data that we have for creating our predictive model. So, what would our predictive model do? Our predictive model would, you know, take one, two, three, and four. So if you pick these five, if you take the gender, age, income, spending score, and family size. And once we are going to do this, we are going to create a formula. We are going to create a formula that will take this five information and return an estimated value or a, get or a prediction as to what this six information is. Let me take that again. What we are about to do today right now is this. We are going to create a formula, in essence, linear regression, a formula that will combine this you know, five information and you know, return what should be an estimated prediction on amount spent. We are going to have a formula that would be gender, that would, that, that would receive gender, a gender value, age, income, spending score, family size. And you know, the, uh, the output of that formula is what um, amount spent. So the formula is very, very simple to understand. Simple interest, we are, if you don't have a formula of simple interest, right? That's principal rate times time. Equal divided by under the simple interest. That's a formula. That's a formula, right? Principal, you know, times rate times time. That is a simple form, formula for simple interest. This all is divided by 100. Right, all this divided by 100 gives you what your simple interest. So, in similar manner, too, we are going to have a formula that is um, gender maybe multiplied by a number plus income multiplied by a number plus age multiplied by a number plus spending score multiplied by a number plus family size multiplied by a number. All this will be equal to what amount spent. That is what linear regression is in the very, very simple terms, right? Basically, the creation of a formula that will take your data, that will, you know, take your input data. Operate on it and give you your output results. Right, that is linear regression in simple terms. Okay, so this is the training data for today's class. This is the training data, the same thing like our overall data, but our overall data is 2000 rows. Remember, we want training and test. Remember, we want training and test. If we look at linear regression, if we look at linear regression as a child learning, right, you first give the child examples in class, then you tell the child, okay, come for your exams or come for your test. In similar manner, we have, you know, the examples in class over here. This is the example in class over here. The training data is the example in class. The test data is what is the uh, um, exams that the child will later take on. If you look at linear, if you look at a linear regression model, like, you know, a child, if we akin it, if we you know, compare it to a child learning in class, that is what training and test data mean. That is exactly what training data and test data mean. The training data is how we create the linear regression model. The test data is how we evaluate and, uh, on, uh, and see that this model works. Okay, so we have looked at our data. We have looked at our data. I've come back to our workflow. We've just looked at our data, right? We've looked at our data. Now let's go on to set up visualization and linear regression model. Let's go on to set up visualization and linear regression model. Okay, so. Before we do that, I want us to look at these columns once again. I want us to look at these columns once again. Everybody, look at these columns once again. We have gender, age, income, you know, spending score. Let me go ahead and you know get this out like this. We have all these columns in here. I want us to look at these columns 
I want us to look at all these columns in here, right? Spending score, family size, amount spent. Now, please, people, people in the um, everybody in the chat, I want us to you know answer this question. When somebody has a high income, when somebody has a high income, would the amount they spend in our store will it be higher or lower? Somebody with a higher income, would they have a higher amount spent? Would they spend more in our store or less in our store? I want people to, I want people to hire. Higher, yeah, Anastasia. Yes, I extracted from the main data. The overall data is here. Our, our overall Anastasia, our overall data, you know, is 2000 rows, is 2000 rows, but our train data is just 1800 rows, and our test data is the last 200 rows. So that's that. And one, one thing I said, one, one thing I said in our overall data, the gender is in text, is in text. But if it comes to our train data, I was about to get to this, but let me just talk about it. The gender is now zero and one, so we converted, we converted because. Linear regression model does not understand text, it understands numbers. So we need to put a number representation of the values, right? So whenever it's whenever we a male a male was recorded, we change it to zero. Whenever a female was recorded, we change it to what to one. Right. So everybody is basically saying the exact same thing here. Okay, Flora said less. Flora, you said less in the sense that uh, if somebody has a higher income, they will spend less than somebody that has a lower income. So meaning that. If um, um, Faith is earning um, um, two million and Eric is earning one million, we are saying that Eric will spend more than Faith. Right? Well, we are going to confirm that. We are going to confirm that whether it is true or not. But most of us are saying that you know the higher you earn, the higher you spend, right? So let's go ahead and confirm that. Let's use visualization to confirm that visualization. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to select everything here, right? In my chain data, then I'll come back here and select everything under amount spent. I will select everything in um in a, in a income column and everything in a amount spent. Then I'll come to insert. I'll come to insert. I'll come to insert. I'll come to charts, and then I'll pick what is called a scatter plot, a scatter plot, and I'll click on that. So look at a scatter plot right about now. Look at my scatter plot. My scatter plot x. Oh, uh, sorry, y. In my scatter plot, y is um it means it is of uh, income and x is amount spent. So income versus amount spent. Now I want us to observe this. I want us to observe this. Does this look does is this does this um is this you know does this visualization relate to what you just said to what everybody just said? Right, the higher you earn, the higher you spend. Right, the higher you earn, the higher you spend. It's it, 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 this visualization, you know, is the proof that what we all guessed is correct. So you can see um from the data, um from the data, Flora, that actually the higher you earn, the higher you spend in online stores, right? From the data that we have over here, from or this particular data, right? In the context of this data, somebody said um the family size also. Yes, you can go ahead and do that visualization on your own. You can go ahead and check how the family size relates to amount spent. Just go to insert, right, and you know pick up. Or whatever visualization that would help you out with that the most. Okay, we don't have enough time to look at all how all the columns relate. So I'm just going to take the most prominent one, which is amount spent versus income. And we see that there's a this is called positive correlation, or it is called you know a positive proportional relationship between amount spent and income. Right. So this we keep. Let's keep that. Let's keep this somewhere around here. Let's keep this somewhere around here. Okay. Let's keep this here. This is our visualization. That just, this just confirms our hypothesis. Right. That okay. The amount, the higher you earn, the higher you spend. And what you should understand is this, right? You can go ahead and have several hypotheses and use visualization to confirm if this, if this guesses or hypothesis is correct or not, right? This one, it is correct, right? Okay, let's move on to linear regression, right? Let's move on to linear regression proper. We're going to create our training model. We're going to train, we're going to create a linear regression model using our train data over here. And then when we're done creating the model, we're going to, you know, use this test data. Uh, uh, you know, as assignment for the model, for the lack of better words, as assignment for the model, right? As classwork for the model, as exam for the model, right? If you please. Okay, so let's come back to train data, right? Let's go ahead and create our linear regression model. The first thing, remember I told you, remember I told you about Excel. I said that Excel comes with several features. One of those features Excel comes with is called the data analysis toolkit. Look at where it is, the data analysis toolkit. I want to, I want to appreciate the fact that this data analysis toolkit, what we're about to use to create such a prominent application, is in a sea of other tools. 
look at the numerous tools we have under Excel. And this one is just sitting down here. We have forecast sheet, what if analysis, right? Text to columns. What we want to use is this, but I want you to appreciate the fact that it is not even like, look at how they kept it. Like it is just there. Like mm, this is one of the many things we can offer you, right? Let's go ahead and click on data analysis. And then under data analysis, you see that there are a lot of tools. There are a lot of tools here. You can, you can calculate covariance. You can perform descriptive analytics, statistics. You can, you know, perform exponential smoothing. You can even perform Fourier analysis, right? But what we want to do today is what? Regression. Regression. So scroll to where regression is and click on OK, right? Click on OK. Now you have your regression board coming up. You have your regression board coming up, OK? You have your regression board coming up. Right, so now you want to guide and perform regression. Let me clear out every all, all these spaces. Let me clear everything out. If you, if you come out empty, it's because I, I, I've done this before in the past. That's why it's coming, it's coming out filled. This is how to come out empty. This will be unchecked also, right? This is how to come out, right? If this is your first time working on this data. This is how to come out. So now, what are we being asked of? We want to get a regression model. Now, I've told you in the past, I've told you just now that a regression model is like a formula. It will receive input data. It will perform calculation and it will give you output data, right? It will give you output data, right? Y range, Y range represents your, your output. Now, when we are training, when we are training, we'll give input and output to the model. The model will look at input, look at output, will come up, will come up with the formula. Let me explain that again. When we are training linear regression model, we'll give the model the, both the input and the output. The model will come up with the formula that relates the input to the output. I'll take that one more time. When we are training a linear regression model, we'll give the model the input data, the X range data, and the Y range data. I'll stop using input and output because I feel like we're now getting advanced. I'll use the X range data and the Y range data. I will pass both of them to the, to the empty model, right? The model will now learn, okay, what is the relationship between the input and the, the X range and the Y range? What is the relationship? It will come up with that relationship. And once it, once it has come up with that relationship, the model will... It is, it is said that we are done training the model. We are done training our linear regression model. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to specify the input and the, uh, the input Y range and the input X range, right? The input Y range is amount spent. I will come here, click on amount spent. So let me let me break it down again for you. I want to specify amount spent as input Y range, and I want to specify every other column as input X range. I will click inside here, input Y range, I'll click inside there, right? Then I'll come in here, select from amount spend, click, press control, shift, and down. Select everything. Select everything. That is my Y range. Then I'll click on X range. I will come back up again now. For X range, I want, yes, the answer I want for X range, I want family size, spending score. I want family size, spending score, income, age, gender. But I don't want customer ID. I don't want customer ID. Why don't I want customer ID? Customer ID is useless data in this context. Customer ID is random values given to everybody that registered. It is random. There is no pattern to it. There is no sense to the data, to that portion of the data. So we don't need it in our regression analysis. We don't need it. We go ahead and we'll leave it out. So anyway, it's a unique identifier and there is no story behind how those numbers are generated, just randomly generated. You would often want to leave it outside of your analysis. You would often want to leave it outside of your analysis. So I'll select from gender to family size. Control shift down again, selecting everything. Now, look at my selection process. It involves the name up here, the name of the columns. It also involves the name of the columns. It involves the labels of the columns, the labels of the columns which is this value over here. We need to tell Excel that, okay, the data I'm selecting, I'm also selecting the name at the top. I'm also selecting the name at the top. So I'll go ahead and I will, say, I will click on this box. Right, once I do all this, um, that is for a default um, person creating a simple linear regression model, this is good enough, right? Now, when your model is done training, when your model is done training, remember I told you this, a linear regression model is just a formula. So when the formula is done cooking, when the formula is done cooking, right? When the formula, I'll, yes, I'll do that if you're lower. When the formula is done cooking, it needs it needs somewhere to you know drop the results. It needs somewhere to drop the results. I want to think of somebody in the kitchen that 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 picks food from the fire from the from the pot or from the hot stove and he's trying to drop it somewhere, but there's nowhere to drop it. You know how chaotic it can be. So we also need to specify where do we want the result of our regression to be placed in. 
this is the box that does that for us, output range. We click on this box. I say, let's start from here. Let's start from here. Let's start from this particular box here, right? And then I go ahead and click on, okay. Now, mm, everything comes out. Congratulations, you have created your first linear regression model. You have created your first linear regression model, okay? I'm going to split this out here. Then I'm just going to do one, one more thing. I'll select this down here. Just a bit, just spacing everything out, basically. Nothing much to look at, nothing much to see there. So, congratulations, you have created your first linear regression model. So, let me let me recap, you know, how to get to that regression box if you're low, if you're lower. Simple data, click on data, go to data analysis. Now, you may not have data analysis on your end because if you're using the free version of Excel, right, you may not have it on your end, right? But click on data analysis over here, right? There are a lot of tools will come up. Select regression, select regression. And click on OK. And the box comes out. OK, that's how the box comes out. Right. Now we have our model. But remember, I told you this a linear regression model is just a simple formula, a simple formula, nothing more, nothing else. And this is the important part of the formula you need to know about. This is the important part of the formula you need to know about. Let me interpret this for you in layman terms. In layman terms, what this model is telling you is this Ibrahim, if you want to calculate amount spent for a candidate, take the family size. Multiply it by minus one four, multiply it by minus fifteen point seven this plus take the spending score, multiply it by one point five plus take the income, multiply it by point zero zero nine plus take the age, multiply it by four point three five plus take the gender, multiply it by minus one three four minus one three four point eight five. So basically, take this number, multiply it by this value, take this number, multiply it by this value. Take this number, multiply it by this value, do for this, then do for this also. Then add everything together. That is my that that is that is what the estimated amount spent should be. That is what this model means. Yeah. Now a lot of things here, you know, we go ahead and understand it. You know, if you key into the data science program properly, because a lot of things here depends on class one, and this is a an excerpt from class two, right? So um, once you have all your coefficients in here, you can now go ahead. I've seen now. I've told you these are the coefficients. I've also told you. I've also told you how to use it in the formula, right? So you are not going to use it in the formula for your test data. For your what? Your test data. Your test data. Now it's very simple. You take gender. Now this test data has amount spent. Like if you are writing an exam in a, in a classroom, if you are writing an exam in a classroom, of course the exam questions have answers somewhere. Maybe you, you don't know where the answers are. Right, all you are doing is you are, you are solving your own, your own, you, are, you know, you are submitting your, your, your answer booklet, and it is now the examiner with his own answer sheets that will now mark you, right? So, our test data to have an answer sheet here, but what we are going to do is we are going to apply that formula on all this first, get our model's own answer here. Then, we are not going to compare our model's answer to the actual correct answer. We are going to mark our model's um, exams, exam, exam um, booklets, basically, right? So, that's what we are going to do now. We are going to apply the formula. To these columns, right? Apply the formulas to these columns, right? Get an estimated amount spent. Let me put that in here. Estimated amount spent, right? And then finally, we are going to compare to this amount spent to the actual correct answer and see how well our model is doing. So let's get started. Now I told you that the formula is very simple, right? You take the coefficient over here, you multiply it by the actual value. You take the next coefficient. You multiply it by the actual value and so on. Then you add everything together. So I'm going to break it down. I'm not, I'm not going to come and type everything at once and complicate everything for us here. No, I won't do that. I'll take it step by step. First, I'll multiply either them separately, then I'll not add everything together. So let's multiply separately. So the first thing I want to do is I want to multiply gender. I want to multiply the gender value here. I want to multiply the gender um value here, right? I want to multiply this value with the coefficient. So I'll say equals to this yeah multiplied by what i'll come to train data and i'll select the coefficient for gender select it press enter so this is it this is now b2 minus the location of that number in the train data sheets over here simple as that b2 this is b2 multiplied by what the location of my coefficient where my coefficient is basically here now, because it's the coefficient, because it's in one place, I need to ensure that it is not, um, I lock it in. So to lock it in, don't worry, it, when these stuffs are a bit, you know, um, background knowledge. If, you, if you're already familiar with Excel, you should understand. If you're not familiar with Excel, don't worry, the program, you know, outlines all this. 
right, before you even come to this particular portion of the, of the program, right? So log this in and press enter. Now it's giving me zero because it is basically this value my times B2 and B2 is zero. But if I drag it down, if I drag it down, right? If I drag it, give me a second, let me just. If I drag it down here like this, right? You see that the values, there are values in some places. So meaning that when in the gender is zero, when it, you get a zero, obviously, but when the is one, you get minus one, three, four point eight five times one. That is gender value. I repeat again for age. I will repeat again for what for age. Let me go ahead and delete this column over here. Let me go ahead and delete this column over here. So this will be joining here. So I repeat for age now. It's called this age value. I'll call this age value, right? So equal to again, age multiplied by its coefficient. Come to where the coefficient is. This is coefficient for age. Select it. Press enter. This is the coefficient for age. I will come in here and again I will lock it in. Lock it in. Okay. Lock it in. Right. Press enter. Now 36 minus the age coefficient gives you this age value over here, right? Go ahead and I will double click on this to calculate for all the ages of my test candidates. I've done for gender value, I've done for age value. I move, I go on to income value. And I repeat again. So like this, from this juncture, it's basically just repeating. Now there are much, much expert ways of automating this, but I want to take it step by step so you understand this, right? Because it's your first time here, right? So for income value again, equal to income multiplied by what? Come to the income coefficient. Look at my income coefficient here. Come to my income coefficient. Select it, right? Press enter. This is my income. Come here and ensure that it is permanent. Okay? Great. Then I, you know, auto-complete for the remaining candidates. There we go. Right. I move on to what? Who's spending and family size. Let me just copy spending and family size. Come over here and paste it here. So spending, you know, I will just do the same thing. Equal to... This multiplied, come to my train data. Where is spending score coefficient? Here is it. Select it. Press enter. Come back here and edit. Add your dollar sign. Add your dollar sign. The dollar sign ensures that this um, sheet holds this value in place. It uses, but why are we holding it in place? Because we want to auto complete for the remaining candidates. So we need to ensure that we can hold it in place while we are calculating for the remaining candidates here too. Otherwise, it will misbehave. Okay, now the last is family size equal to this multiplied by come to train data, select what family size down here, press enter. Now, what about slide do? Add my dollar sign before and after the L, add one before the L, add one after the L, press enter. Right, so come in here and double click on this. Okay, right about now, we have what right about now, we have we have just taking each value multiplied by its coefficient. Now I'm going to sum everything together to give you a linear regressions opinion on what each of these candidates will buy. Now remember, we have the actual value here. We actually, we have the actual value here. Let me go ahead and, you know, come to page layout, or come to home. Let me highlight it. We have the actual correct answer here. We have the correct answer here. Don't, don't, don't get, we have the correct answer here. Let me use green because green is, you know, correct answer. What we want to just simply do right about now is what? We want to create, the, the model wants to solve its own assess, assignment, right? And come up with its own answer so we can now compare. So I'll come in here now and I'll say equal to sum, sum of everything from gender value down to family size. Close this, press enter. So let's look at the first one. Now, our model is saying this. Our model is saying that, oh, this particular candidate, I expect him to spend 8,597. But the actual correct answer is what? Just 8,000, right? Approximately 8,000, right? Let me look for the second one. Oh, second one again. The model, the model, the model's opinion is saying that I expect this guy to spend what? 9,642. But the actual correct answer is what? 10,000. So the third person is what now? Um, the model is saying, oh, I expect this person to spend 19,000. But the correct answer is what? 21,000, okay? And the last one is, let me just do one more. Um, this person, in reality, is spending 12,000, but the model is saying 11,700. So now my question to everybody in the, in, the, in, the, in the chat is, do you feel like the performance of this model, is it good, is it bad, is it in between? Good, bad, in between, that's what I want. Is it good, is it bad, or is it in between? Those guys and, you know, I just look at these first five tests that we have given the model, these first five opinion. 
that I've asked the model for and look at the actual correct answer. So it's good. Yeah, so this is okay. Relatively, it is good because you know this this is not do or die, you know. So you can, then you can say it's in between, but in my opinion, this is not do or die, right? Because I've noticed something the model is not the model is not overshooting, it's undershooting consistently undershooting. Like it is constantly giving you a just a bit lower value, right? Just a bit lower. It is like conservative in its opinion. And that's not a good thing in this context because remember the problem is this: we don't want to present things that the user cannot afford as advertisements. So it is. So this is in our favor because now this means that we all, if we follow this model's opinion consistently, we will always be assured that we are not going to market goods more expensive than what the person can actually buy in reality. So for candidates one now. Oh, pardon me. Uh, yeah, for, for, for MS candidate sooner, candidate sooner, the actual the actual amount he can spend is she can he can spend is ten thousand, but the model is saying nine thousand. The second candidate, the actual amount he can spend is twenty one, but the model is saying nineteen. So meaning that the model is consistently giving us values close to on the lower end of things. So see that it's good analysis. Like uh, Felix said, it is good analysis. Okay, and yeah, this is just one of many examples of uh, models we have at our disposal. Even if it's not bad analysis, even if it's not bad analysis, like. Benedicta says it's in between. There are other models you can use. That is, it's part of the data science package of that. They, you see, there are countless models you can use that we will outperform this. This is just the easiest one to explain, right? So I'll go ahead now and I'll auto complete for everything now. I will come here and I'll double click on this now. Um, mm, everything we can have. Okay, we can have for everything right about now, right? So onward from here onward, you can go ahead and look at your, you know, your three data again, and you can see what the uh, the 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 arrow square adjusted arrow square standard error what they all mean what they mean basically but these are the ways we evaluate our regression models okay so that is it so we have just basically you know um we started out by what's looking at the data the train and test then we visualized then we created the linear regression model and what did we do what did we do? oh that's true oh that's very very true the intercept ah uh, Okay, then, okay, 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 okay. So yes, let me go ahead and add the intercept. Uh, the intercept was not used. Uh, let me control C this. Yeah, okay. So control C this, come here and put in the intercept. Okay, the intercept was quite, it was a negligible value. That's why I didn't use it. It was a negligible value. I feel that, okay. So go ahead and bring the intercept in 219. Um, so just go ahead and add this now. Adjust this down here and add it. Okay, see, this is why you need to, yeah. So go ahead and add the intercept, okay? Add the intercept. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I didn't use the intercept, but now I'm using it now. So this is just an additional small amount, right? An additional small amount. So come over here again and change your sum to what to M, right? I think that's M, M to what to M. Okay, so yeah, the intercept has been, but see that the amount basically is just an addition 219. So yeah, um, it's it's maybe it's negligible, but it's still part of you know what you are supposed to add, and it's a constant. It's a constant, right? It's a constant. Okay. So yeah, that is adding the intercepts now. The intercepts. Okay. So let me let me just um come back to this here and show you what intercept means. Now, linear regression is like straight line, but it's straight line with a higher dimension, right? You cannot you cannot you know visualize it on a two dimensional um, um like the way you do here. So intercept is where you know the axis, the line crosses zero basically, right? Like what that means is that by default, anybody comes to our store, this is the amount they spend, even if not, even if everything else here does not exist, this person will surely spend $219. It's a constant amount they are bound to spend. So maybe this amount might come from registration fees or entrance fees or whatever, but most of the time it's a constant amount that they will spend, irregardless of their demography. We will surely spend this amount. Then the additional amount. And now they are a result of what their gender, age, income, spending score, and family size. Okay, so this is how you go about creating your linear regression model and going ahead to what to make prediction on a test sample. And you can compare, you know, with your, you know, by looking at it. But more importantly, you can use the metrics over here. You can use the metrics over here, right? This regression statistics over here, arrow square, adjusted arrow square, and the standard error to evaluate your model, okay? And that is it. So we have just come to the, you know, the portion of the, this masterclass where we talk about, you know, um, building our linear regression model. Now, one thing I want to guide and say is this. One thing I want to guide and say is this. Now, in the second half of this masterclass, I'm going to discuss how you can, you know, take simple um, no, um, knowledge is like this, right? We can have this knowledge, you know, in building you and then leverage on it to apply for rules, right? So what you have done today now is an example of what you've been doing, right, within the program. It's an example of what you've been doing within the program. Okay, so let me just go ahead and share this entire screen again. Okay, 
Let me go ahead and do that. So share. Right. So coming back here. So we've just um if I can see myself on the other screen, let me go ahead and check that out. Okay. So basically, right about now, this is all we have done. This is all we have done. We've looked at the data, we've set up visualization, we've um done what's next, we've um looked at set up a linear regression. Then we've um you know looked at the coefficient and applied that to a test sample, right? Uh, the MAD was not used, but rather we use the standard error. Okay, so moving on now, moving on now, moving on now, right? So what we have just saw so far, all we've saw, all we've seen so far, pardon me, all we've seen so far, right, is um one of many potential responsibilities of a data scientist: predictive analytics, predictive analytics, predictive analytics. Now, a data scientist should be able to perform more than predictive analytics. Remember in our data analysis toolkit, there was correlation. We saw correlation there, right? In our data analysis toolkit, we saw correlation there, if you recall. We saw um, ANOVA. We saw um, 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 descriptive statistics. These are these are callbacks to other areas of a data scientist's responsibility when giving business data. A data scientist can perform descriptive analytics. A data scientist can perform descriptive analytics, okay? A data scientist can perform diagnostic analytics. A data scientist can perform prescriptive and then predictive analytics. The intercept seems to increase the error, am I wrong? So that, yeah, it seems to approximate it. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a constant value that is added to your prediction. Yeah, so it seems to, you know, it not increase the error by the way, but rather it's just increase the value that the model is predicting by $219. So yeah, that's just what the intercept does, okay? Just a constant add, add, additional value, okay. And it's one that is very if you look at you know the average amount spent 10,000, 12,000, 219 dollars, you know, it doesn't really shift you know the overall value uh, uh, in um, percentage wise, okay. So, yeah, um, moving on, moving on now. So, yeah, these are some of the these are the four cornerstones of a data scientist, right? We apply a data scientist applies advanced analysis, statistics, machine learning techniques, you know, to derive meaningful insights and build predictive models to derive meaningful insights and build predictive models, right? So we derive insights through descriptive analytics, right? Diagnostic analytics, right? These insights require that, you know, come up with suggestions on how the business can, you know, leverage on them with prescriptive analytics, right? And then finally, we predict the outcome of the future, which was predictive analytics, right? So these are the four cornerstones of a data scientist. And the key learning areas the analytics offer the key learning areas that analytics offer in terms of understanding how to perform these four analytics are statistics, which is the class one. Class two is now forecasting and predictive analytics using Microsoft Excel. That is class two. That is why things like standard error, um, I could not properly ex explain them, you know, with the with the level of freedom I wanted to because of time, right? But you know, statistics is the backbone. Then you leverage on statistics in class one, forecasting and predictive analytics in class two. Then you move on to W. SQL, no, sorry, not class two, pardon me, not class two, but a series of classes. Yeah, then you go to Tableau, SQL, Python programming, right? Exploratory data analysis. So you see that visualization we did, we are going to actually, you know, go deep into it, right? You know, look at the various types of visual elements that we can always use to communicate insights from our business data, right? So that and that concept we learn again, one of the key learning areas. Then after that, we're going to machine learning, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, machine learning is not power computer vision, and then we'll learn about, you know, version control and how you can use chat GPT for coding up, you know, Microsoft fabrics for analytics, okay? So yeah, that this is where data scientist is, and these are the key learning areas that, you know, once you understand the concepts in these areas, you can beat your chest and feel yourself a data scientist, right? Now, the timeline for how this, you know, key learning areas will be administered is four months, four months, three months in class. Three months thoroughly trashing these concepts. Three months understanding. Three months of, if I'm being honest, you know, a lot of back and forth between, you know, you be in classes, you, you know, you will have videos coming in, right? And you would also be practicing on your own. Three months of exhaustive, exhaustive, exhaustively, you know, learning. And then one month of internship. One month of internship where you take all your blends and you create practical projects. Now, the way the, the three months is structured is that every time you learn something new, you create a project. You create a, 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 a bite-sized project, something that will not take much of your time, but at the same time, you know, demonstrate your ability to provide value using the concepts you have learned. You do that, right, every time. So your, your portfolio is gradually getting built. Then the internship is like 
the you know the climax of your program where you take all you've learned and apply it to a very very resounding compelling and you know uh, uh, um, attention grabbing projects right that is what the internship for one month now and for fast of this will make up a bulk of you know experience for people you know that, that are coming to the program without experience right so after you're done with that you uh, uh, sorry pardon me um the, this four month period right three months like i said is for learning but also you know the learning happens on saturdays right we have live classes on saturdays right mondays we have it at you know 11 a.m to 2 p.m western african time Monday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Western African time. And, you know, um, 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 in the evening, let's say Monday, sorry, morning, morning, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Western African time, right? Um, this is for people in the EU, European, you know, EU region and UK region, right? And Africa region. And then in the evening, we have the 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., right? So people in, you know, mountain or, or 10 a.m. to 11, 1 p.m. mountain time, people in Canada and in the U.S., right? So these are the two um class uh, um class times we have. And also, on Sundays, we release Watch Me Do It videos. So on Sundays, we release what we call Watch Me Do It videos. Now, what are Watch Me Do It videos? Watch me, it's in the name already, but they are self-paced videos that help you understand the concepts you know, through and through. Then class is now for you to come after watching those videos, right? You come to class again, you trash those concepts for three hours straight, right? You use those concepts to build projects, right? And use those concepts to, you know, you know those concepts you are going to cement your understanding of them in class. Right. So these are the way this is the learning timeline and you know the uh, um, um, um the, the timing for how you know, learning will occur in the program, right? So the full stack data scientist, that is the name of the program we offer at analysis. It's called full stack data science, right? And a full stack data scientist should know this uh, particular um, um two two kits statistics, Microsoft Excel, W, SQL, Python programming, analytics and visualization. Machine learning, and lastly, my favorite computer vision and natural language processing. Computer vision and na natural language processing, teaching a computer to see basically it sounds, it sounds you know, a bit um, uh, exciting, yes, and it is right. So, the course, right, the course, the full stack data science course is designed for both beginners, for both beginners with no experience at all, no experience at all, and for people that are, you know, experienced individuals in other areas looking to come into data science. So we are zero, you know, zero, zero, or uh, an empty slate approach, right? We take an empty slate approach. Okay, everybody's coming to this program. We need that, the understanding of statistics. We don't care what you know coming in. We are going to, you know, walk you through, you know, a much, much structured, rigorous learning path, right? We are going to also teach you how to program with Python. You know, like I've said, create amazing data visualization and then use machine learning with Python to solve business problems, okay? So one thing you should know about the courses is that they are 100% practical. They are 100% what practical, right? And why should you choose this course? Why should you go ahead and train with analytics? Okay? Why should you go ahead and train, you know, with analytics, right? I'm going to outline a couple of reasons. I'm going to outline a couple of reasons. Now, these reasons cover, you know, the nature of the facilitators we have, and it also covers the approach we take in ensuring that you don't only learn well, but you bag that job that you want or you get the opportunity that you are that propels you you know to learn right so why should you train with us first and foremost we have an outstanding success rate we have an outstanding success rate two thousand people and two, more than two thousand people have transferred from the classroom to their first tech tech um, tech, um job in tech right across the uk us canada europe africa and asia right that is the track record we have set up for the past four years right now you think it's just, I'm just going to say these numbers. No, I'm going to also provide you with, you know, um, video um, testimonials of these same participants, right? That, you know, they came back and they, they, they're like, Ibrahim, they were like, um, um, Efemina, they were like, Adeza, we need to, you know, um, talk about our experience with analytics and how it has transformed our life immensely, right? So I'm also, I'm also going to show you, right, these video testimonials of, you know, these particular candidates, right? So that's one of the things that, that's one of the um, cornerstone of, you know, what we call sources in analytics, right? Also, industry standard facilitators and curriculum, like I said earlier on, the nature of the facilitators themselves, right? They are coming from the industry, right? They are coming straight from the industry. See that when I introduce myself, I didn't say my name is Ibrahim Ibrahim and I know A, B, and C. I said my name is Ibrahim Ibrahim and I've worked in so, 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 and so. That's what I said. That is what I said. I said my name is Ibrahim Ibrahim and I've worked here and I've worked here. This is my LinkedIn. Check my profile out. This is Ifimina's LinkedIn. This is Adiza's LinkedIn, right? This is evidence. So we have this, this is the standard, the gold standard of who we set for ourselves when, you know, getting facilitators to take our curriculum, right? Also, 
we recognize also we recognize that not everybody you know learn in the same manner right not everybody learn in the same manner so what we've done is this we've created a blended approach right an approach that takes a, 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 a multi-faceted approach right we combined live classes watch me do videos you are a fast-paced learner you know you have the ability to move forward you are a slow-paced learner you have the ability to take your time so we have you know have this blended approach right that we've created to how you know we facilitate you know um the learning content and finally lastly the tailored sessions right position to land your first job we understand that most of you are coming here propelled by opportunities so it'd be unfair for us if we just teach you and not show you the the strategies and the pathway to landing your first tech landing your first tech job now there is more there is more all i've just stated far is about you know teaching the core the course content right you know the facilitators that we are bringing in so but now i'm going to focus more on the the, the strategies and you know the session right the approaches right that we've come up with right is a three-layered approach on how you can land that your first job or have success in the job market right and this is the three-layered approach overall it's called the, the employability service um, services that we offer the employability services that we offer right so level one is you know cv review sessions level one is cv um, level one so level one contains you know cv review sessions right cv review sessions right where we bring you on board and we'll let you know, you know, what works in your CV and what doesn't work in your CV. We'll go ahead and let you know what works in your CV and what doesn't work in your CV. How do you organize your CV, right? What are the keywords you need to add in your CV, okay? How do you go about, you know, using this, making a CV that, you know, is, is, a, is a page donor, right? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's, it's, it generates interest, right? That, that kind of CV. We have those sessions um packed right we have those sessions you know in, in in within the programs right that you can come on board and you know uh, enter also we have the linkedin optimization now in the past right before you know linkedin was a thing you know it was the usual take your resume you know send it to um, potential employers and the review but once linkedin became a thing we you know we understand that now people can you know once they have the perfect linkedin profile or the, a near perfect LinkedIn profile they can sit in their house and get people, you know, reach out to them on this platform. If I've experienced this type of success in the past, right? When somebody just attended the LinkedIn optimization session and, you know, the following week, I had people, what am I saying? Just, you know, last week, somebody reached out to me and said that, okay, 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 this is the second time somebody is calling her for an interview, right? So on LinkedIn, chat now up for an interview on LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn op optimization, optimization session, right? We understand. We understand that having a um, the perfect LinkedIn profile is you know one of the stepping stones, right, to getting you know at least a job interview or your first job interview. Okay, so next up we have upwork -up optimization. Now, for people interested in freelance opportunities, for people saying, oh, I want to work when I want to, where and when I want to work. For people inter interested in freelance opportunities, upwork -up optimization is how you know we will empower you to you know enter into that space, right, and excel. We also have, you know, all these sessions, you know, they help in navigating the job market. We have additional sessions that help in navigating the job market. And the last thing to bring up here is the job and interview preparation. The job and interview preparation, right? Job prep, uh, interview prep, pardon me, interview prep, right? So we have empowered you. We've given you a dope CV. We've um, crafted your LinkedIn, you know, to be, you know, top notch. Now, what's the next thing? Obviously, interviews will start coming in. Interviews will start coming in. We are also going to, you know, we have set up a system where, okay, you come, you come face face for an interview, or you are, you know, you are giving an interview date. You can reach out to facilitators at analytics on standby, you know, for an interview preparation session. An interview preparation session. We we'll sit you down one on one, and for one hour, we are going to bring you. We are going to bring you right. We are going to prepare you right. We are going to ensure that you know, you are smoking. You are, you, are, you, are, you are on fire by the time you enter into your interview preparation, right? We are going to show you the strategies. How do you introduce yourself, right? How do you introduce yourself? How do you address situational questions, right? What are the expected technical questions you have to, you know, um, um, uh, expect for that particular position? We understand that each interview is unique according to the position. <clears throat> Once we're done with that, we also have one more on, on that level one, which is the reference letter, the recommendation letter provision, right? We understand that. Some, em some employers would want you to provide a recommendation letter and analytics would act in the capacity to distribute that, you know, on, on, on gold star recommendation, right? So that is level one. Level two now involves, after all this, we still have, you know, weekly mentorship sessions. 
we still have um, weekly mentorship sessions, right? So here we, we bring in experts from the field, you know, to come into to come into sessions with you and guide you on your journey, on your transitions, right? We bring in alumni too, right? We have this weekly mentorship sessions, right? Where you attend and boy, is it a, a is it jam packed with you know knowledge, right? And last, we have on the job support. So you've gotten the job, you've gotten the job, right? We realize that okay, there's a bit of trickiness to the nature of the road. There's a bit of you need you need, you need more navigation. We can offer you one month support um, after you get the job. We offer you one month support where you can you, you reach out to us, you get on calls with us, you know, to help guide you through, you know, whatever tricky situation you might be going through, right? One after you're done completing your transition. Now, all this we are doing all this with you know with the guarantee that once you come into the program, you actually you don't you don't, you don't just pass through the program, but you allow the program pass through you, you are guaranteed at least at least one job interview, right? One job interview once you are done, you know, the program. I'm saying at least because you know, obviously, it's going to come in masses. But what you're saying is that you are going to one month after the training, you are going to we are guaranteeing you that you are going to be entering into your first job interview, right? So this is everything on you know the additional employability service that you know we got and provide, and that is our promise, right? That once you allow the analytics, the analytics program pass through you, you are expected to come out, you know, with you know a job interview waiting for you. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and talk more on our success stories. But also one of the reasons that we can guarantee that that um in, that um opportunity is the fact that we also have some new initiatives for the year, right? Body mentorship, um, the internship has been enhanced. And finally, we have a um, partnership with, with recruitment agencies in the UK, US, Canada, right? Um, Robert Half, Avinash, Michael Page, um, um Conferry, Kerry Services, Tech Systems. These are some examples of the um, agencies that you know we are in constant communication with that we are in constant communication with the whole point of being in constant communication with them is this we, we know for a fact that you know we have potential you know candidates that can suit in roles so we keep in touch with these agencies and when the opportunities come up you know we just take these people that in our system and we you know refer them to these opportunities so this partnership has helped you know increase the level at which we get you know, opportunities uh, flowing into the analytics ecosystem, right? Now, I've said a lot. I have said a lot. And some of you might still be doubtful that, oh, Ibrahim, this just looks like something that anybody can come out and say, right? This just looks like something that anybody can come out and say, well, guess what? We also have success to do. We have an abundance. I told you, we have transitioned 2,000 plus individuals in the space of four years, and most of them come back, right, to, you know, get on camera with us right you know tell us the stories right tell us how their experience has been just to you know, give us right the um, the empowerment to go out and do more right so these are some of our success stories um in your babu in your babu story is quite a, a peculiar one and it's one i always like to reference right because in your babu um wanted to go into data science right so i'll, I'll be referencing data science individuals here pardon me i'll be referencing data science individuals so i'll be skipping business analysis and data engineering just only data the data science individuals there. So Inia Kwabi, right, was vying for a data scientist position, right? And but Inia Kwabi had a plethora. Okay, what are WMDIV? Okay, watch me do it videos. Um, Anastasia, watch me do it videos. Um, we do live classes. We teach you face to face, right? But you know, we we do realize that in the in the, in the context of time, you know, we also need to provide self paced materials, right? These materials are called watch me do it videos because it's basically watch. Uh, um, someone do it and then you repeat it yourself, right? So um, these are in addition to the classes that we have, right? To ensure that we, we ensure that all bases are covered. And as they are, that is what a watch me this video is, or WMDI videos, right? So like I was saying, in your you had a plethora of experience in management, right? Coming to the program. So it was already fitted, you know, for, you know, rules in management. But in your probably wanted to transition into data science, right? So he started the program, and by January 2024, he completed the program. Right now, in the probably went to a job interview or several job interviews. Like I will, this video, I will play it by the end of you know the the, the, uh, the um, session. In the probably and went to a job interview, and you know surprisingly for him, he did so well. Right, that he was he was given the data science role, but also an additional opportunity to come and run the day to day of the organization, to come up and run the day because of his management skills. Right. Come and run to the data company to come and run the day to day of the company. Since you, are, you have this data science experience, we also have, we also have a plethora of, of experience in management. Um, we, we, we look at you as the IOD candidates to take the helm of affairs, affairs 
in, you know, in the company, right? So this is one of the peculiar suits we're in here, probably. And that peculiar suit that always comes to my mind is Ikmat, right? Is Ikmat. Let me bring up Ikmat's story for us, right? So Ikmat, Ikmat transition, yes, Ikmat. Yeah. So Ikmat transition from being, you know, a full-time, a full-time stay at home mom in the UK to a data analyst with the NHS in the U with full sponsorship, right? So there's always a discussion of about um sponsorship is a big deal, right? And in, in Ikmat, that's this is one of you know Ikmat's on uh, uh, I, I point in the story she tells, right? In the fact that, you know, they gave her full visa sponsorship, right? And with the NHS as a data analyst, coming from the data science program, by the way, right? She was, able to, she was still able to bag a job, right? In the data, as a data analyst with the NHS, okay? So Shade also, yeah, so Shade got the job, you know, as a data scientist, right? In the UK, okay? So I'm going to just go ahead, maybe at the end of the program, at the end of, you know, my discussion with everybody, I'm going to go ahead and play the video, um, the videos of Ikmat and um Ini Akabi, okay? Right. But these are all our other success stories. These are all our other success stories. I can only see so much. I can only see so much. I'll get your questions, T, um, on, on building portfolios. I can only say so much, right? So, where's what I'm going to say? Um, we have seen the success stories. You have seen the success stories, right? You have you have seen people like Ikmat and Inya Babu. So if you are interested in going ahead to make payments, you need to come, you know, to this link over here, right? So I don't know, Lydia, um, is the link can can you why is it possible you put you paste this main start dot me link um on your end? It's not possible. Um, don't worry, this the slides. If you, if you receive them, you will see the link in the slides also, right? Now, we we are giving back. Like I could have everybody that, that that is here. If you wait to the very end for a special offer. Right. Um, we are going we are going to be in, in for a very, very good, good offer, right? So we are currently giving back, right? So what we are doing right now, right about now is the early bed discount for the first tax degree in this sport that is about to resume. The next sport is third of August. The next sport is third of August. The next sport starts third of August, right? And we are giving back with the early bed discount, right? You you pay, you 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 qualify among the first 30 people to make payments, and rather than pay the full amount of $750. Right, you pay only six hundred dollars. Now, if you want to lock in this on this bonus, let's say, oh, um, Ibrahim, um, I don't have full amount, but I want to lock in. I want to, you know, get this opportunity, right, not to pay the full um, amount. What you can do is this: you can pay um half now, or so you can pay more than half now, a bit more than half now, and then you complete your balance by the ending of the month, right, by the ending of the month. Okay, so that's what you can go ahead and you can lock in. On the uh, on the promo, right? You can lock in on the promo now, and then you know by the end of the month you go ahead and make the call. So it can be you know in two parts. The payments can be in basically two parts, right? You lock in on this discount, right, by making your first payments, and then you make your second installment by the end of the month. Okay, so that is um how you go about you know locking on this discount. Now, one more thing I want to say is this: you might also say, "Oh, Ibrahim, I don't have time." Um, but I really, really want this early bird discount that we're, that we're giving out in August. What you can do is you can lock down the payments to again, right? Come into the program and defer to the to, to the next month, right? Let's say you will be clear in September, can you know lock down on this bonus again and then you know defer you know to the next month too, right? These are the two approaches that I, I can give you to be to ensure that we don't miss up on this opportunity because it is bound to end once the first thirty people you know register for this sport. This is the link, and I think I should go ahead and you know just um um going through the link for everybody here. So yeah, I am right about now. This is me coming to the main stack.me slash enrooting analytics. And why it's building up, I'm going to go ahead and answer um the question for um for um I think this was who asked this. This was um give me a second. Uh, yeah, this was um T. T was saying, how do you support Fat Smart it's building that portfolio? Lovely question because T, it seems like T has an inside source on you know what are some of the things that you need, right? To you know get this um get opportunities in the tech space. So here's how we do it. Right? Here's how we do it. At every opportunity, at every opportunity while you are learning, we we, we, we give projects. So we, we we have like I said, it's a blended approach of learning. It's a blended approach. Now one, one of these um um threads in which we teach is project based, right? So the classes themselves, we, you see the way this class was structured. You see the way this class was structured, right? We did what we created a linear regression model for an online store to make predictions of what they are going to buy. This is a project you can package on your own. You can see this is a project, it's, it's, it may be a weaker version of what you want, but it's still a project you can package and see this in this project, I created a linear regression model for predicting how much 
users coming into a store will you know make in purchases. You can this so that, that is how we it's, it's a subconscious process. By the time I done the program, you look back and be like, oh, I have projects in Excel, multiple projects in Excel. I have projects in Tableau. I have projects in SQL. I have projects in Python. Supervised machine learning or supervised machine learning computer vision. So you are like six, seven projects, six, seven projects across board. There is no employer that see that that will bring up any criteria that your portfolio would not stand up against and say that and say that yes, I am suitable. So that is how we go about you know building your portfolio. We will not just teach you and then you know then come back and now start telling you portfolio. No, we are doing it immediately. It, 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 the processes are running together. The processes they work together such that you know by the time you are done with the program, you have the knowledge, you have the you have the ability to navigate the job market, and you have a resounding portfolio. So that see, does that answer your question on how we support participants in building that portfolio? It is not. It starts from the one. It starts from the one. It starts from the one. Okay, yeah. So um, I think somebody asked um, when is the deadline to pay? Right, the deadline to pay is before to, um um the court starts, which is in the slides that will be shared. Okay, before the court, so that's the deadline to pay, right? Um, but more importantly, the deadline for the bonus is once the first thirty individuals are paid for the program. Okay. So here we go. The main start link is also here on this um, is also here on uh, Lydia has posted it for us here on the um, chat. You can go ahead and check it out. But this is what you are expected to see. So this is the same, this is the pricing, right? So what you are supposed to do is just go to the program over here, full stack data science, click on it, right? And then you know, you go ahead and you, you engage the content of the program. It takes a while. Uh, will I share the Excel with you? Okay, um. I will share the slide with you, and I think I should go ahead and share the Excel with you also. Yeah. So yeah, Anastasia, you get that too if you want. Okay. Yeah. Um. So um. But you know that it is not like you know it's not full end to end. So you know you the program bolsters your knowledge base on what we just did today, right? Okay. So you come to this page right about now and just go ahead. The minimum you can pay is four hundred to lock in your bonus. You go ahead and you lock that in here. So I'll go ahead and you know um make just make right. You go ahead and you proceed to pay. You go ahead and you proceed to pay. You enter your name. I'll just enter my first name now. Let me, let me enter my full name, Ibrahim Ibrahim. Okay. You enter your email address, right? And then for phone number, you select your location and then you go ahead and, you know, you put in your phone number in there. Right. So after you're done with all this, okay, you go ahead and you proceed to pay and then, you know, you can now come back and reach out or you can come back and basically, you know, confirm your payments with us. Right. So that is how you go ahead, you know, to make um, payments. So I'm going to come back to the slide right about now. Here we are. Okay. So next up, right. After showing you that, okay, you now see um how to go about making payments. But before I take questions, before I take questions, before I take questions, somebody asked for the Instagram page. Somebody asked for the Instagram page, right? Um, I Lydia, um, is the first to go ahead and provide that. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, she, she has already done that. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. And yes, fill the attendance form so you can get you know the materials for this class, Anastasia. Okay, and everyone is interested. Okay, I love the interest that is coming up. You know, just from the content of what we did today, right? So before I go ahead and you know take questions, you know, before I go ahead and take um questions, you know, while you're playing the feedback, I'm going to play the recordings of these individuals. I I promised us, right? So I'll start with Ine Akwabi, right? Ine Akwabi had a full on session with us. He had a full on session with us. I I don't want. Ads to come up. I, that's the last slide. Yeah. Pass IT certification exams with exam topics, offering real exam questions and answers. Okay, so this is Inia. Asking Inia that same question. Inia, how did the training prepare you for your current job role? Could you walk us through the interview preparation you got from Tanalytics and how it was helpful? You know. All right. Now, um, let me, let me just quickly say that um. An R is not enough for me to talk about all I have gained from analytics. Okay. <laughs> One day is not enough, right? Not enough. A whole day is not enough. So I could tell you for like one week, two weeks, one month. Yes. So now the thing is this um for analytics, all right. Um from day one, from day one, I knew I knew that something was different about these guys. Okay, because I my my beginning the training, okay. I've done a lot of I've been I've been 10 years in tech, right? So I've done a lot of trainings here and there. I have certificates to show for them, but I couldn't um stand before. Um I, I didn't know how to put them together, right? I had a lot of things scattered here and there. I didn't know how to put them together. And then all of the sessions that we had, 
besides the regular Saudi um, live classes, we had, um, of course, the Thursday method, method, mentorship sessions. We had um, the Wednesday, just like this, and then a whole lot. So I was able to harness this time, okay, these um, resources together, all right? Um, the CV um, optimization session, the LinkedIn. So I had, I took my time, okay, went into LinkedIn, revamped myself. When I looked at my CV and I said, wow, I dumped my initial CV. I picked up a new one and I started afresh, right? So before then, I tell you that I could stay for a whole year, two years, three years without attending one interview. I sent my CVs for jobs, you know, openings. I never got a call. A call, not even a message, say, oh, um, to the next stage. But in January 2024, everybody mark my word, please. In January, between January 2nd and and um, last, okay, um, 2nd of, Feb of February, I have had more interviews attended than I have ever had in my entire career. Wow. Okay, now let me also let me also tell you, yeah, between January 2nd and then I have all the emails on, in my box, okay? So I, I know what I'm talking about. Between one month, right, I've had I've attended a lot of interviews than I've ever attended in my entire life because I took my time, looked at my CV, looked at my LinkedIn, and I pushed it out. A lot. Okay, so yeah, that's Ini. That's Ini telling us, you know, how you know he came on board and you know kind of transformed his his, his you know his career development, like you know with everything we did here at analysis. Okay. So I'm not, but you know, in in his video is in his video is two hours long. So I can't play in his video for two hours long. But the link, the links are here. You can go ahead and watch that session. You can go ahead and watch that session. You can go ahead and watch that session, right? And you know, understand the impact, the impacts that was made um uh, uh, in his um career development, right? So I'm going to play Ikma's video also. I'm going to go ahead and play Ikma's video also, right? I'm just going to go ahead and play that too. Hi, everyone. My name is Ikma, and um. I was with the match boards in 10 analytics and joining 10 analytics has been the best decision so far. You know, for me, someone coming from a background of full housewife, because I had to stay back home to look after my child. And then wanting to break into something new, wanting to go back into work, into the workforce, you know, wanting to place myself in the society for better job opportunities. So it was a lot. And then I'm glad that analytics came along and then they presented me with so many opportunities right in front of me, better opportunities. And then I'm glad I took it. And then uh, also the advice, not sell yourself short, that if it is always saying it's very, very valid because place yourself right, you know, don't sell yourself short. The very, very, very valid advice. You know, in analytics, they will hold your hands like a child, you know, through through the models, you have to you have the opportunity to go back and study. You have the opportunity to go back and practice. You have the opportunity to ask questions. You know, we have people you can always go back to even outside of class, class hours. It's, it's the most amazing experience of our really. And then another thing is the interview prep, guys. That is another very important thing. I did my interview prep with Mr. Muhammad and it's the best decision ever because he was like he saw into the future. He knew what was going to be asked. And I'm glad that I took, I wrote down all the things he mentioned and went back to practice. And then when it was time for the interview, it was like everything he was mentioning, everything he mentioned, it was just they kept on. And then when I was answering those questions, I was so confident, you know, because I already practiced. I did an Excel test, I did a math test, and then we were really impressed. And another thing is, guys, it may not come as fast as you expect. Definitely, you are going to get some news, and then you may begin to think you're not good enough. You are good enough, yes. The news will come, but always take it as a basis for learning and development. Because after every interview where I got a new, I always make sure I get a personal feedback. So I work on those feedbacks for my next interviews. And yes, it worked. It really worked for me. Because... I got my first job three months into the program. My first job. I couldn't take up the job because I was still, I was a student and I wasn't able to do to work 20 hours. So I couldn't take up the job. 
three months later, I got two jobs with full business consultation company. And guys, all the other no's before the two jobs prepared me for the yeses I got. So yes, the no's will come, but do not give up because you always have the analytics to go back to. They are the best, best, and the best thing that's ever happened to me. And then, yes, um, and they are the, the most affordable. The most affordable one I've come across so far. That's the very good advantage. Yes, the analytics for the win. Okay, yeah, thanks, thank you for quick mass. So I just want to outline, um, so please, if you, have, if you have any questions, I will advise you now, Go ahead and type it out in the chat, okay? We'll take as much as we can. But we also have the clarity sessions, right? Where we have one-on-ones, right? We, you know, to answer these questions also because we are always there for you. That's one thing, also, that's, that's it. That's one thing that starts you know, communicating from the very, very get go, okay? So if you have questions, you can go ahead and drop them here. But, you know, we can, we can, also, we can also, you know, engage the clarity session, you know, or clarity sessions, one-on-one Q&A, where you can also ask, ask those questions. If they are not answered yet, right? Because of time, right? So, I want to outline one thing, Martin, which was we hold your hands, right? We hold your hands. Now, this is not in a patronizing manner to say that, okay, we um, look down on everyone. But this is the manner that we understand that, you know, navigating this journey, we understand how to navigate it, right? We understand the do's and the don'ts. And we are going to ensure that you check all the boxes, right? Ikmat is an example of that. But look at the way Ikmat's story is and look at the way Ini's story is, right? These are two different sides of the same coin. They want to get you know opportunities right in the data science space, right? But the way they are coming from fastly differs, right? Fastly differs, right? But we're still able to because of the blended approach, because of the you know start from ground up approach. We made no assumptions that anybody knew anything, and we held hands and we got to the finish line with both of these participants. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask about now. You can go ahead and ask about now or uh, before you know we call this session to a close. So um that that's two of us on call. I want to appreciate everybody for sticking around after learning how to you know deploy their first predictive um Excel model. So if you have any questions, you know, um if you want to engage the um the payment system, the links are in the chat. You want to you know fill that you need to fill the attendance form to get the access to the resources that we used also including these videos that are here to write. Um, you get if you get the YouTube link, obviously, you get the actual videos. YouTube link is what you get, and you can watch the videos on YouTube also alongside the slideshow and everything else. Okay, so yes, um, if if um any questions, let me go ahead and take them um before we call the session to a close. You can also raise your hand if you want to speak. Um, you can also do that too. Raise your hand if you want to speak, okay. So I'm just going to um wait a couple of minutes and then you know um three minutes and then you know if there are no questions right um recordings will be stopped and then we will call the class to a close right right so if we... so like I was saying um why anybody that is typing that question will be typing if anyone asks like I said once you receive these resources right you can go ahead and you know get you know access to the countless individuals that have what that have gone through the program that have you know had success and you know you can hear their stories you can and one thing you understand is this they are no difference from you they are no difference from you they are no difference from you okay and you know that is um on, on, on it right so like I said earlier on it always seems impossible until it is done it always seems impossible until it is done but here we have here we are with countless stories right of individuals you know which that started out, you know, on ground zero and, you know, got to the top, right? Okay. Right. So, um, very joined I need a CV. Okay. Yes. Um, so, yeah, the limit of financial session would happen, right? It happened uh, uh, um, periodically. So, uh, then the CV review, um, yeah, there's, there are also sessions on that too. Uh, okay, so um, you would want to reach out to um facilitators to get them um, to you know get um get access to you know, when next to point or you know um access to one immediately if you know it is urgent, right? So yeah, um that's Anastasia who has already joined. Okay, so yeah, um, so no one seems to um have any questions, right? So Jedidaya, uh, I think we can call you know the session to a close.
with this. Um, yes. So, um, Jediah, you can go ahead. I think you're going on in the stop recording now.